How are you guys doing today? It's Anthony Ganji. Welcome to another episode of On The Line. Today we're going to talk about staff assault. What do we need to do to protect the agency from liability? You know, when an inmate assaults staff, do you know that the lawyers will start calling the facility wanting to represent the inmate that committed the assault? And do you know why they're calling the facility? They're calling the facility because they think that us as staff are going to retaliate, are going to, in return, assault the inmate. Now, with that said, we don't want to do that, guys. We don't want to retaliate. We don't want to commit to revenge. We want to be professional with dealing with this inmate. So when this inmate makes it to court, we don't find ourselves on the defense. We're strictly on the offense. And what are some of the best ways to do it? <clears throat> After the assault, the people that were involved, the staff members that were assaulted, the team involved in the initial response should not be involved in that escort. There should be a second team led by a different supervisor that's gonna now escort that inmate to medical to be evaluated. Now, mind you, at this time, we're also gonna get a camera here because this is gonna be a camera escort. That camera escort is to video us and our professionalism. If the inmate wants to make any allegations about how they were treated after the assault, I got video footage showcasing that you were treated like you should have been treated by the professionals who are escorting you from point A to point B. So again, from the incident to medical to be evaluated. The camera escort also continues from after the evaluation to some form of pre-hearing placement. Now at this point, what the agency should be doing, especially if you're working at a state prison, jails may be a little bit different because you are have that one facility and it's hard to transport an inmate out, but sometimes they will. They'll try to see if another county be willing to take up the inmate. But for the prison, we could always transfer them to another state prison. So the inmate, until they're able to be transported to another facility, they remain on camera watch, supervisor contact, only. And again, alleviate any form of allegation. We have it here, guys. The person was not moved. And if they were moved, they were constantly under camera escort. Now, eventually, when we have the transport in play, now the transport staff should be coming from the receiving facility. Again, we're trying to alleviate any conflict. They will pick up the inmate. Now we'll continue the camera escort until we drop the inmate off to the receiving officers to transport him out. And at that point there, the receiving officers, they may keep the camera escort on them or they may uh, take it off once they receive the inmate or place the inmate at their facility. Because again, at that point, there should be no conflict. But again, you see what we did? There's an effort to protect that inmate because we want that inmate to face their day in court and we want to be able to strictly present an offense, not a defense. So again, guys, negative interaction with that inmate from the people that were involved. Switching teams to do that escort, camera escort all the way through. Get that inmate seen by medical. Camera escort to initial placement to pre-hearing until we can figure out what we're going to do with this inmate. And then we should be transporting that inmate out. Again, this kind of alleviates the facility. And again, that's going to be a team from the receiving facility doing the transport. And that's going to be a camera escort to those officers. And at that point, it's up to the receiving facility. Sometimes what you also want to do, which isn't always discussed... Is sometimes staff could have generalized animosity. So sometimes after a staff assault, you may want to lock it down briefly to give staff a chance to cool down. Because again, they could get very frustrated and next thing you know, we're just not thinking clearly and anybody that wears khaki becomes a target and we don't want that. So it's very good for the administration at that point to maybe lock down the facility a little bit, make sure our officers are good, they're emotionally balanced 
and then we'll make an effort to open it back up again. Now, if there's the death of an office, that's a little bit more detailed. Lockdown would definitely be a little bit longer than that. It could take a while because, again, you're going to want to make sure that you have people on standby to talk to staff, like a SISM response team, because you don't want to open up a facility too quick when you have staff right now just tied into their emotions. It's a very bad move. When the families are calling saying, hey, why is my son locked down? What's going on? It's locked down until we make sure staff is okay with what just happened. You don't want to open up too quick because if staff's not okay, mm, matters could get worse. So again, it's just a quick dialogue. Just wanted to let you guys know that when you do have a staff assault, it may look like we're making efforts to protect the inmate, but really is to kind of alleviate whatever that liability would be against the house and against our professional staff. As always, guys, the show is on the line. If you haven't, please subscribe, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. Bell is going to notify you every time I post a video. Check out the on the line hat. Look at this. And then in the back, it says Guardian RFID. I wouldn't mind wearing my hat like this because I think it's pretty cool. But I'm also 44 years old. So back to the front. As always, guys, stay safe.